All right, now to the Middle East, where a ceasefire has been brokered between Israel and the Palestinian militant group Hamas. More than 200 people have died as a result of attacks, which started earlier this month. Paula Slier, Newshound Media International journalist, joins us now live from Israel. So, Paula, the ceasefire holding into a third day. Take us through the agreement that's led to this calm. Well, the ceasefire went into effect on Friday morning at 2 o'clock local time, which is 1 o'clock South African time. And I have since then been visiting the Israel-Gaza border every day, and you are correct, it is holding, so much so that people here in the south of Israel are moving back into their homes, and the same in Gaza. Those people who can move back into their homes are, have already left their shelters or are leaving their shelters and are moving into whatever kind of accommodation they can. There was a lot of pressure put on Israel, particularly by the American president, Joe Biden, to adhere to and commit to a ceasefire. There were five phone calls between Biden and Netanyahu in the space of 24 hours just before Israel gave the nod late on Thursday that it would actually adhere to the ceasefire. We'd already heard from Hamas a short time earlier that they were ready for a ceasefire. So in the last moments, it was Israel holding out. And that was because Netanyahu wanted to try and hit as many military targets belonging to Hamas in Gaza as he could. He also addressed his own population, and this might be for his own political benefit, saying things like, we will not be told when to have a ceasefire. We will not be told what time frame and what conditions. This is something we will agree to on our own. Of course, the fact that the ceasefire has been has now been committed to by both sides is something that came about with the mediation of Egypt. We did have Egyptian officials here for a few days before the ceasefire was implemented. They were the go between between the two sides, carrying forward and backwards and bringing the ceasefire about. Yeah. So how long, given how big this contention is, how long are we expecting it to last? Because it's a very sensitive matter, isn't it? It certainly is, and that's the million-dollar question. I can tell you that the feeling on the ground is that it's not going to last that long. I've been talking to Israelis. They say anything from a couple of months to a couple of years. The feeling, again, on the Israeli side is that they feel that they were successful in this latest round of violence because, to quote Israel, the Israeli defense minister, they managed to cut back a fair amount of Hamas's military capabilities. So from the Israeli side, it will renew when there is an uptake in terms of the kind of military power that Hamas has. They blame Hamas for starting the whole round of fighting. On the other side, of course, they don't trust that Israel will stick to the ceasefire. We have heard from the Hamas spokesperson saying that the time frame on how long the ceasefire will last really depends on Israel and whether it, it adheres to its commitments or if it breaks the ceasefire. Hamas is also claiming victory for the latest round of violence. So Israel's claiming and Hamas is claiming. We did see celebrations in Gaza on Friday when that ceasefire was declared, also here in East Jerusalem, which is predominantly the Arab-Israeli population in that city. And so there's even disagreement over who won the last round of fighting. There's certainly not going to be agreement on the way forward. So we've seen lots of visuals of people shoveling what's left of their homes. Let's talk about the human, humanitarian efforts here. What are they looking like? They quite... They're quite depressing, to be honest. Already before the ceasefire was declared, we had statements coming out, from example, the United Nations Relief and Works Agency saying that they had run out of enough um, material. They, they were running out of humanitarian relief, essentially, to give people. The problem was that the fighting was also continuing. So a lot of the humanitarian aid that comes to Gaza comes through Israel through the Karen Shalom crossing, and the Israelis say that they were forced to close it repeatedly because there was shelling and there were rockets in the area landing, and so it was risky as well. At the same time, we had heard from the United Nations that one of the big problems they're facing now is the sheltering of people who lost their homes. They have been temporarily housed in schools that are run by the Gaza administration and also schools that are run by the United Nations. Just yesterday, the Gaza Education Ministry announced that it was cancelling the schools now. They've essentially gone on holiday or what, a break because 
they cannot contain, they don't have enough school materials, they don't have school classrooms because you still have people who are inside those classrooms seeking shelter. So the immediate needs for Gaza are shelter, food and basic supplies. And of course, we are, we are continuing to hear from Al Shifa Hospital, which is the main hospital in Gaza, that they have a shortage of medicines and a shortage of medical supplies. So the humanitarian situation is better than it was a few days ago.